the huge predators give credit to the humble yellow-billed hornbill. Eating termites, probably, or ants. Can't see on the ground there. It always amazes me how accurate they are with that bill, which does have feeling in it. And if you ever, I mean, if you ever, I know this sounds ridiculous, but if you were to tie something that length to the front of your face and then try and accurately place the point of it onto something the size of a termite or an ant, I promise you, you wouldn't be able to do it. I think the coordination involved is quite stunning. Definitely found some colony of moving insects. I'd love to get out and look, but I'm not going to. I'm going to let him carry on eating. If he flies off, we'll have a look. Marianne, a nice question from you about starlings. And you say, are there any starling species in this area that are considered a nuisance as they are in various parts of the United States? Well, I think that the starling that you find irritating there in the U.S. is in fact a European starling, so it's exotic. I've seen them in New York. Here's definitely an ant nest there. That's wonderful to see. And Marianne, we get them in South Africa, not particularly, um, not in this area. They have become a nuisance in some areas. And there are one or two wild starling species that are a bit of a pain in uh, human settlement areas around, say, the Kruger Park. But that's just because they've got used to being fed by people. But they're certainly not a major nuisance, a major pest. A major pest bird in South Africa is something called an Indian miner which is quite closely related to the starlings. And we've seen some at Arethusa Dam, actually. That's the only time I've seen them in the Sabi sand, but they do come in every so often. And the Indian miner is a real menace, especially in urban areas. <laughs> 